going on, Juco? Yeah. yeah. This is God with trust. Fritz, how you doing? God with trust. Corinthians 3, verse 7. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. There's my grandmother. We need to call mom. And she is the life of the party, doing her thing. <laughs> I miss her very much. You know, this is what this documentary is about. So there she is again holding my firstborn, my daughter Amelia. Her eyes, her <laughs> nose, her mouth. I don't know if she, she don't look like you. <laughs> and um, something I'm always thankful for is that I was able to give her a great grandchild that she could hold and still remember. So to God be the glory on that. She prayed for her children. She prayed for me. I want to see her when she get two years old. When I first song started off, like I hit a song, I hit a beat, and I just, you know what I mean, get to the flow, like, get to the flow, like right here. Do like a quick little, like the quick little demo, and then I just put the words in as I go along, you know, and I put the words in, talking about, you know, what's going on in life, and yeah, so we come through. Lay some down on real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, come get me from this wilderness. And forgive me for my will of sin. I pray to God for deliverance. But for my soul going to abyss. No, come get me from this wilderness. And forgive me for my will of sin. I pray to God for deliverance. But for my soul going to... Nah, that ain't it. That's not it. That's not it. Let's see. It's not it. Yes. And forgive me for my will of sin. I pray to God for deliverance. But for my soul going to abyss I'm fresh out of a seven day fast New vision, new mission He told me would come to pass I had to block out all the noise I put my feet inside the grass I put my demons in a bath If a man can see the truth Should he walk inside the light If I get rid of my vices Do I get the gift of flight When you look inside the mirror Do you like what's in your sight These are questions of my life When I lay my head at night And I had leeches on me My leaf is straight, I 
I got questions, he got answers, so I'm calling out his name. Amen. You don't come get me from this wilderness, this wilderness. And forgive me for my willingness, my willingness. I pray to God for deliverance in the car. No weapon formed against me, but prosper it will fall. I was walking through the dark with the law. Hello, oh, man. Trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this next. In time now, I'll just be, um, I'll cut the vocals and I'll just try and get as much mixing as possible. But if I can't get it done in one day, cut back to it. And I know the fate gon' curse my name And yeah, you played your part And I do not feel no pressure When my back's against the wall And I heard a voice inside my head They say go build an all Stay the cause in the dark When you lost, reach your songs Verse 1 Yo, come get me from this wilderness And forgive me for my will of sin Like this, I think about this project right now, man, and I'm just like, yo, God gotta guide me through this one. Most high gotta guide me through this one. After that seven day fast, man, I really, I'm really learning how to put my trust in the most high with everything that I do, you know, especially with the music, because music is so powerful. So, you know, I always gotta have the most high input you know before when i was making music you know before my fast i didn't realize that um i wasn't really including god in my creative process i was just talking about certain things that i went through in my life um but i didn't really include god to the maximum that i could i gave hints and you know little um like little things in my lines to show that I believed in God but I never really let God spearhead a project for me I never let you know my spirit get renewed by way of God and then make music after that um process so this this EP is this is really something that the spirit has guided me to do so I got to trust in it you know even down to the mixing process the recording process I just gotta trust in it, you know. Put it up. Right, we're gonna get through. Alright, let's go, y'all. Uh, it's your boy, Fritz, the producer. Um, just here to talk about the 7 Day Fast EP that I actually executive produced. Um, with my with my brother Rel, and I would just say like it was kind of different, you know. Um, with this project, definitely like I was shocked, definitely shocked. But in a good way though, definitely in a good way. Cause I know for sure even when me and Rel when we lock in, it's not the first project that we've worked on. Um, I always know anytime me and Rel work on something, and even when he like tell me. Give me ideas. I, at first, I'd be like, I don't know. But then, the finished product, once I hear it, it's just, it just catch me by surprise. But with this one, definitely, like I said, it was different because um usually, like, he'll tell me, like, okay, yo, this, this, yo, go about it this way. Like, I'm gonna do this. And but he just sent me the record, and I heard it, and I was like, oh nah, this is, this is different. But I like what I'm hearing, and listening to the project, like. It was at, at 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 that time in my life too. Even for me, like I was in a you know fucked up place, you know, mind uh, mentally. So listening to that project, it definitely like helped me go through what I was going through. So um, I say you know, like I said, like with this project, this this definitely was different even for me listening to it because I wouldn't even say just on the music side, even like real life situations, you know, personal life stuff. Cause you know, we do get caught up when it comes to like doing this music stuff or even like our careers in general, anything entertainment wise, you know, or in this world, we get caught up on a lot of that. 
and we get to, we tend to forget about ourselves and you know um and also like basically you know shoot just overworking ourselves just trying to like yo i gotta get to the top and and just forgetting about god you know sometimes we gotta lock in with ourselves and make sure that we cleanse ourselves our soul and put god first with everything that we do so this this project definitely was one of the one that i was actually me listening to it it helped me go like i said it helped me go through a lot for sure um and then even seeing rel um I remember I got the call from him. He told me to pull up to the Autumn House. Um, I pulled up, and it's crazy because he told me he called me, he called my partner, um, my boy Weez and Seppi, and we all pulled up like one and by Benny. one. And Benny, no, Benny pulled up that day. He pulled up last. Oh, okay, yeah, but the, the crazy part about it, he 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 mentioned he called it out like, and it was weird because I'm like, okay, he's like, yo, this this gonna happen, and it actually happened. Like first he. When I pulled up, he spoke to me about it. He's like, yo, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And then looking at it, like, I think we pulled up right after. And then Seppi pulled up and then Benny pulled up. And he just called it out. But just seeing him talk about it, it was just a different energy and the conversations that we were having. Like, it wasn't even on some music stuff. It was just this, like, real life you know, um, talking about being spiritual out there as well. We just had a full blown, like, deep conversation. So, and from there, like, before we left, we just had, like, we just prayed, we prayed, and then we went back to doing what we we're doing. But we were more like cautious of the, our actions, of the things that we were doing as well. So that was definitely needed around that time as well. Sometimes I be, I be like slacking, but. I have to be more aware. So even the people that I'll be around or like I have more of an idea of like who to deal with or certain things that I don't like get myself into, you know, not saying I'm, I'm oh, I'm, you know, we make mistakes still in life. It doesn't mean like that. I, I don't know. I feel like with people, I, I'm not going to judge. Let me not judge. But I feel like this is for me. I feel like, you know, when you try to get closer to God, it's like. You got to be perfect. You're, you're not going to be, you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect in this world. That's one thing I could say, but you're just going to be more cautious of how you're doing things. That's a, I, that's one of the things. And then, and there's more other stuff to it as well, but you're just going to be more at peace. I could say for sure. Like you're just going to be more at peace, you know, but you could still like, you know, do your day to day, but you're going to be a little bit, you're going to be more at peace, you know, making music. Man, to be honest, nah, I definitely want to say something. Um, I just want to say I really appreciate everybody that, you know, that I've been, um, I've came across, you know, especially like Rel, Benny, um, my, my lead gang partners, man, like every day, like when I start my day, you know, I, I learn to like do certain things and go about certain things, certain ways. But one thing that I, I, I realized, like getting on these calls and, and speaking of my, um, my peers, just talking about life stuff, real life situations, it just helped me a lot. You know, having somebody to like really to to um go through this journey with. So, yeah. man, my bro, well, thank you, man, for being part of the documentary, man. I love sure. you, bro. Put God first, man. There you go. Make sure y'all put God first. There you go. Exodus twenty verse twelve: Honor thy father and thy mother, that days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy give. That's my pops. <laughs> Pop a leaf. He is doing what he love to do too. Smoking himself a bone. <laughs> Bless his heart. But um on that um that night I had called him and I told him, you know, I had to go on a, a, a journey. I had to do it on my own. And, you know, that was a, a tough thing for him because me and him got a real good bone. That's my man, that's my you know, my best friend. Just me and Benny, of course, waiting for our flight. Take it forever and a day. But, yeah, we doing what we need to do. Trips in hand. Getting ready to get on the uh, get on the plane. And uh, shout out to, again, Benny Musa, man, for just filming. Filming the documentary. Working with me on this process. Um, you know, taking his time out, his talent. It's my brother, man. I can't, you know, I can't even imagine... Uh, this company without him and what we've been doing without him, 
you know, it, it wouldn't even be possible to be done. We about to get on a plane, which I don't know, man. I hate flying. I hate flying. This is not it for me right here. This is where I get the most nervous. When that takeoff happened and we getting ready to get on that, get in the air, that's when I get a little, you know, a little shaky. You know, and then when we land, I'm better. No, they're not. Yeah. Good old mountainy region. How's it look? Looks crazy? It, it does look good. Because it's a dope background. And when you move around, I'm going to send you a check. These are questions in my life. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Right. And then you got to work with the focus ring. Yeah. It'd be lit <laughs> if we could get a burning bush. That would be lit. 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 We'd have to pray about that first because that's call that's calling something. <laughs> that would be lit. You ready? Yep, camera rolling. If you could let the wind catch it. Is my basketball show showing? I can't see it from here. But I'm assuming they are. Huh? You might yeah, you gonna have to take your shoes off, bro. Vinny, I'll go from here though. Yeah. I'll go from the wall, Vinny. I'll do some shot, Vinny. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the ball and I'll unbox this turn. Made it to the top, man. God be the glory. End of the video shoot, man. The wilderness. Boy, feet. Blistered up, man. Boiled up. The glory to God, man. It's, it's one thing to have, you know, a vision. It's another thing when God is guiding your steps and executing the vision with you. It's nothing like it. You know what I'm saying? And I want to give a special thanks to my brother, my good friend, my brother Ben. Um, I want to be. The, uh, the person that I am if it wasn't for my brother. Um, I've learned so much from him and I'm um, very thankful. He shot the video, he always shoots my videos. Um, I shoot his videos. This is really my brother in, in Christ. Um, and my brother in business and I'm just so blessed to know him. I'm so honored to know him. So shout out to Benny who's behind the camera. And, um, yeah, we uh we got the top of a mountain. <laughs> and um yeah, just finished shooting the video. And I mean the God be the glory, like um you know, I feel like once this video is out and the documentary is out, the mission that God told me to do is complete in regards to this project. And today's my grandmother's birthday, Louise de Carmine. Um, and she is the 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 master gardener of our company, Red Autumn. She's the ultimate seed planter. I'm nothing more but a, a leaf that sprouted off of her tree. And so I honor and give thanks to her for all of the sacrifices that she's made for her family. Um, this video is dedicated to you, Mama. I love you. I thank God for you. And uh, you know, rest in peace, Grandma Leaf. We love you. Um, yeah, man, seven day fast. This is um, the second video from it. The first one had my kids. And, um, you know, I'm just so happy to look back and see the work that we've done and see the, the projects that we put out. And I'm so proud that we've had the tenacity to do it. It's kind of like climbing this mountaintop. It's like you get to the finish line and get a little rougher than how it starts off. But when you get to the top of it, as cliche as it sounds, it was all worth it. And it, it really is about the process. So 
you know, I just thank God for the ability to make a project, um, come up here, shoot the video, get good feedback from people, have my, my brother help me with my mission, um, and, you know, continue to grow on this uh, uh, Red Autumn journey that God has blessed us with. You know, we're in Atlanta, Georgia. We were in our new headquarters, fixing it, putting it together. And we sat at the conference table that used to be at our old headquarters. And we just looked at each other and said, wow, you know, we said this was gonna happen by the grace of God, it did. Um, I truly feel like without God, nothing is, is really possible, but with God, everything is possible. So I give thanks to, I, I give thanks to everybody who supports us. Um, I give thanks to my family. I give thanks to my belief, Papa belief. I love y'all. Um, give thanks to the team, uh, Whole Leaf Gang Beats. Shout out to Fritz who produced the EP. Forever, my brother. Love you. Um, and, and yeah, just going in a different direction. <laughs> going in a different direction. Uh, as far as with what we want to do with the with the talents that we've been blessed with, you know. And uh, this project, this EP, these videos, this is just a a way of expressing that, you know. Because we can use our talents for the worst, but if we're using the talents to really do the work of the Most High, and, you know, uh, really try and be better people. And, you know, the mission is done. Because life is short. For you know it, your life is ended. And you don't want to look back and say, I wish I would have did this, you know. Coming up this mountain, coming up Stone Mountain is something that I wanted to do since I came to Georgia and bought the property. Me and my dog Benny did it, shot a music video up here, so it caused me to blow it. You know, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm very excited uh, to get the feedback of the video. I'm very thankful for everybody who you know, enjoy the, the, the other video that we did. And, uh, yeah, just super grateful, man. Super grateful. Since August 1st, man, my life has really been in a way better direction. Um, and it's only because it's the most high of all. Without God, none of this stuff would be possible. So I'm just eternally grateful. Once again, you know what it is? Leaf of the Lord. <laughs> Praises to the most high, man. Praises to the most high for getting us here safely. You know, completing the mission. It's a big deal. Very big deal. So, I give thanks, God. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's it. We follow. Carmine, daughter of Ralph and Louise de Carmine. Louise de Carmine was an entrepreneur for many years and she helped to influence, believe it or not, the Red Autumn LLC. Underneath that Red Autumn LLC, we have several different branches. One was my son Jarrell, who came up with that concept and it really came by influence and by way of his grandmother. And she instilled in her him that business ethic and that entrepreneurship spirit which was formed believe it or not in the living room and the kitchen of our own home at that time Jarrell thought about building out of course a recording studio because he was into the music as a producer and an artist and an engineer from that kitchen experience we then he then formed his own studios in several different locations but one of the main studios was even here in this home that his grandmother owned um, her spirit was here her influence was here and he was able to grow from that and from that experience of being around his grandmother he also took her ideals and formed out red Auto label, Red Autumn Production, Red Autumn Studios, and we even formed a real estate business called Red Autumn House. We ran LLCs 
several LLCs. One, we ran Airbnbs on top of the music industry. This all was formed according to Jarrell's ideas, believe it or not. He influenced me on the real estate side of it. So, um, my mom was a very spiritual woman. She was a praying woman and she stayed steadfast at praying for her family. Even when we ventured off and we did what we wanted to do, her prayers and her teachings, even as my children Grant grew up, her influence and her spiritual life, that they watched her live that life and they saw her spiritual journey, it influenced them later on in life, throughout life and embedded in them from that influence and it was generationally passed down believe it or not because of the type of woman she was she influenced them and they of course as young people did life but then they also had the foundation that their grandmother instilled in them that find that spiritual foundation that belief in god and all things are possible through him so at that point God has his hand on your life. Whether you realize it or not, he has his hand on Jarrell's life, who really he, he chose that a time and a moment to reveal himself to Jarrell, to open up his mind to understanding and to discernment and to that spiritual wisdom that he needed in order to further along his process and to also understand where his process really came from. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come from self. It's God divine. And that experience touched him, believe it or not. He came to me and told me how God gave him a message. A direct message and I immediately listened because I know that God can touch you in different ways he can open up your mind and your heart in different ways so I believe with that experience that Jarrell had a personal experience a personal revelation a personal vision that was given to him in order for him to experience that, he had to go through some things. He had to put some things down mm -hmm. in order for the veil to be lifted. Your eyes can be clouded by the things of this world. Sometimes you gotta put that stuff to the side in order to even hear mm -hmm. and understand and see how God is really leading you, how he's speaking to you, how he's directing your path. Some of the clutter and the noise has to be cleared away. And there's things that you may be told to do in order for you to fully understand God's leadership, okay? And I think that he had that, that I would say that spiritual awakening and he had to follow the directive that was given to him in order for him to go through his process and to regain his spiritual awareness. Sometimes we step to the side and mm -hmm. we do our own thing. But God has a way of making your eyes open, your ears open. So mm -hmm. I believe that he went through his own personal experience with God to reconnect with God and to understand where his life and where in place his life should be spiritually in order for him to prosper, prosper in other areas in his life. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Mama Lee. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is, um, I'm, um, I mean, y'all should know me by now because this is going to be on my YouTube channel, but uh, I'm Rel, I'm the, uh, the founder of Rel Auto. Uh, I just want to say first and foremost, Praise Him Most High um, for being able 
to just come in and do miraculous works, not just within my life, but my entire family's life. Um, I can't even take credit for what God has given me. The only thing that I can do is just be um, humble enough and, and willing enough to try and carry out the mission that was set forth, which is, I think, a mission that my grandmother um, continued, which is to be close to him and to let people know you know that we can't forget God in this world because that's really the only thing that truly matters is our relationship with God. Everything else comes from there. And um, I've been doing music for a while and I've been doing music and I, in a lot of my songs, if you heard some of my songs, you'll hear me reference God. But I never did a project to really glorify God. And I felt that um, something was missing. And then I would, um, it was interesting, like, I was going through some challenges in life, like all things, but I was better equipped from it for it because I was a little bit more wiser, but I was trying to go through these challenges without myself, by myself, without, you know, the presence of God. And um, something, something just told me, you know, you got to fast, you got to fast, bro, you got to fast. And then um, I remember, um, it was a Saturday, it was around uh, July 30th, I believe. And um, I had a dream of my grandmother, my grandmother Louise. She used to um, pray. As a matter of fact, she used to sit right here on the couch, and I would come in, and I'd say, hey, Grandma, you know, I would walk right here, come to the house, I'd come. She'd be sitting here. There'd be a little table, and I would sit, and I would talk with her, and I'd say, you know, Mama, I need you to pray for me. She would go, you know, okay, baby, get, your, get my holy oil out of the cabinet, and she would, you know, anoint me with the power of the Holy Spirit, and um, she would pray for me. And she did that for me for my entire life, um, up until her passing, um, until she was unable to, uh, I should say. And, um, you know, I've been very blessed, blessed by her labors, my grandfather's labors, my mother's labors, my father's labors, but more so, the Most High God spared me. Um, I didn't have the, the greatest upbringing, so, you know, I know that I'm here for a purpose because there's plenty of times that, you know, I could have been in a bad situation, dead, in jail, you know, um, but I was able to kind of pull it through. And as Mama Lee said, you know, we go straight for the path. But um, going back to the 30th, I received that dream. And, uh, you know, it was my grandmother, she said, son, you have to fast. And that's all that I could remember from her in that dream. And I knew that that was uh, God telling me that he's trying to connect with me because, you know, I became too worldly. I became too wrapped up in my own ego, um, wrapped up in my own self-identity, the big leaf and, you know, red oil and the leaf gang this, and, you know. Um, and then on top of that, I was experiencing some levels of success. We had started, you know, the new venture with Red Oil in Atlanta. We just purchased that property. Um, with, you know, our family and, you know, them continuing to believe in the Red Oak vision. But I wasn't correct. I wasn't prepared for the next level. I wasn't prepared for the next level of leadership. And my vision was blocked because I was too busy focused on pleasing the world. And so I started that fast. I started that fast. Um, it's funny, like it hit me, I want to say, always first. That's when I started. I got that prayer. The download, uh, I got the dream, the 30th, the 31st, I called my father, I said, look, Pops, I got to take a journey, you know, I'm going to be back in seven days, you know, don't call me, I'm not going to have my phone, I love you, don't worry, everything is fine, but I was, um, I was conflicted because I was going through what I like to hear, but what I like to understand is conviction, meaning um, God was judging me in real time meaning I was going back to all of the mistakes that I was making and all of the things that I was doing wrong. And, um, you know, when you get that level of conviction, you experience ego death. And you allow your ego to fall by the wayside and you start to, you know, really get that conviction within your spirit and you start to really understand that you're living right. And, you know, by the grace of God, you know, I was saying, okay, I accept my responsibility and one way that I'm going to try and make it right to the most high is by fasting and getting closer to you so that you can ordain my steps and you can come more into my life 
instead of me trying to make decisions on my own and me trying to think that I'm bigger than what I really am. Even though I've accomplished a lot and I've helped a lot of people and I've helped a lot of people's careers in the music side, and different ways, business, etc. It's really irrelevant if you ain't giving the glory to God. And I can't really take that glory, but I was falling into that. I was taking that glory. So I started the seven day fast. I would come up um, 5.30 in the morning. This was relatively empty. I would um, come, come to the backyard, follow along. This is my granny's room, by the way, back in the day. And then um, this is like a little sleepaway room, you know. And then um, I would uh, come back here 5.30 in the morning. And um, I would have a little chair right here. Come, 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 I'll show you. I want you to get the close-up. Get the close-up. Watch your step. All right, so I would come out here 5.30 in the morning. And um, this is perfect. I would pray to God. I would uh, put my chair down and I would talk to God. Now, this place is a very sacred place because my grandmother was a gardener. And so I would see her all around here planting and sowing her seeds and, you know, you all right? I just wanted to show the garden. Oh yeah, and she, she grew um, vegetables and cabbage. She grew a lot. And um, one of the things that was revealed to me by the way uh, uh, the Most High God was to read Psalms 1. And so I read Psalms 1 in the Bible and it talked about being in the council of wickedness and how you want to avoid that. And also being a, a new leaf once you accept, you know, uh, the Messiah into your life, Yahshua. And I read that and that, that really stuck out to me because that's exactly where I was in the point of my life. I was in the council of, you know, my own wickedness. I don't want to give nobody no responsibility. I was in the council of my own wickedness and my own, you know, setback spiritually. And um, after that, I knew that, okay, my journey is just now starting. So over the course of that time, I would come 5.30 in the morning. I would pray. I would be in such a, 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 a great spirit because I could, as I put away my vices during the fast, I stopped eating. I stopped, um, you know, uh, being on social media. I got rid of my phone. I didn't carry a phone for a whole week. Um, I was in complete submission to the will of God. The only thing I did was, for the most part, went to my job, worked, you know, ran my business. I stayed silent. You know, I went missing from friends, went missing from family. I would occasionally see my children. And then, um, you know, I would come here and pray in the evening. And, you know, during that time, the seven day fast period, I would get dreams. I would get visions of what I need to do. Um, I remember when I heard clearly the voice of God come to me and say, and this, these words, are, I mean, they stand with me right now. It's just amazing how God could just work. He came to me and made it abundantly clear. I am the God that your grandmother served and you will serve me too. And when I heard that, and it was such a beautiful yet authoritative voice. And I knew that I didn't have everything figured out. And I knew that without that connection with the most high God, that I would not be able to move forward, not in one ounce. And the interesting thing is people think I'm successful, and that's cap. I'm not successful unless the Most High is, is involved in what I'm doing, unless my feet is ordained by the Most High. I'm not successful. You know what I'm saying? So I just experienced that. I will come here. I got another, um, you know, download. One of many downloads. I call them downloads, but they're really uh, revelations by the Most High. He told me to clean my grandmother's garden and to um, build a space where I can pray and remember her. So this was what I built, which is my altar. And this altar represents my grandmother, my Aunt Margie, and my grandfather. Um, and it represents sowing seeds, the power of sowing seeds and how you will reap what you sow. And so now, finishing the project, seven day fast, after coming out of the seven day fast and receiving that that clear instruction, um, 
I decided to say, okay, I submit. And now the last day, which was the seventh day, something really interesting happened. I came out here at seven o'clock after the last Saturday, it was Sunday, seven in the morning. And the night, the night before, I couldn't sleep. So it was like four o'clock in the morning. I just went to the track and I walked around the track. I walked a mile, it was like three in the morning. And I finally got back and I fell asleep here and then I woke up 7 in the morning. I had missed my prayer time at 5. So I went to the backyard and I prayed. And the sun was facing here. Right there in this direction. Between these two trees. Right there. And I looked at the sun. This is the first time I've ever seen the sun the way that I see it. And I knew the presence of God was right here in the backyard. And the sun blinked three times. Or I blinked three times. And... When I bl blinked three times, I seen the cross three times. And I just started like crying. And I knew, okay, my mission was complete. The wind's blowing right now, that's how true it is. My mission was complete. I have to now use this experience that I've had to tell others, don't forget God. Do not forget God. Don't get caught up in the world. And that's where the seven day fast EP came about which was two prayers and two songs. And God we trust, which is trusting that the most high is the way. It's not me, it's not anything that I've done. The most high is the way, it's not me. In the wilderness, which is what I was going through. I was in the wilderness, I was in a dark space, in the space of being lost. And so the whole concept of that song was, you know, oh Lord, come and get me because I'm gonna destroy myself. I understand that without your presence, I cannot live. And so, you know, I'm coming out of the fast and I feel better than ever. You know, interesting thing too, you know, I was 260 pounds. I came out of the fast and I was 224 pounds and I've been able to maintain that weight. And that was just by what I've learned with God in that process. Um, it was such an amazing experience, man. I can't even, um, explain it the only thing that I could tell the people that watch the documentary is you got to go to God especially in these times because it's so illusionary where we living at we worshiping all the wrong things all and I'm guilty of it so I can speak on it I'm guilty of it so I can speak on it especially within the entertainment industry and the music industry it's a lot of idol worship there. it's a lot of taking an artist taking an entertainer and making them a god and that's not God so we gotta stop that because guess what? It's a battle for souls. My soul was corrupted and, it, and I'm still fighting the battle every single day, but I give God all of the credit and all of the thanks for being able to reveal himself to me during that process to inspire me to record that project, to inspire me to tell others, look, don't forget God. Since that project came out, a lot of people have been telling me, man, you inspired me to get closer to God. I have one of my other brothers, man, shout out to him. He told me he just completed his seven day fast, the best thing he ever did. And all the studios that I built and all of the buildings and the properties and this, that, that don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing if God ain't involved in it. And so I say that and I'm gonna leave with this, man. Glory to the most high. I give thanks to my savior. I give thanks to my grandmother. I give thanks to my relief. I give thanks to all of my leaves. You know, I'm so grateful, man. Shout out to Benny Musa. Oh, my brother. Oh, shout out to him. Huh. Y'all better stop playing with that boy, man. Benny Musa's no joke. And one of the best spirits in the world. You know, and I thank God that he's getting higher with his journey to the most high. You know, Red Autumn, we're gonna go through a different chapter now. We're gonna finish what my grandmother started. We're gonna do the mo we're gonna do the work of the most high. Period. And that's the whole point of me documenting this, so that if I ever get lost on the path, I can always watch this and say, well, remember this moment, don't forget. Don't forget. And on that note, I love y'all. I thank y'all. I'm gonna say this is the conclusion <laughs> of the uh, Seven Day Fast it's, documentary. It's the beginning. But the beginning of something new. Absolutely. So, amen, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Mama Lee.